everyone. Welcome to episode 56 of the Airy Knits podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on and maybe some other craft things, although it's been a while since I've done anything else besides knitting or spinning. But yeah, this is the podcast where I show you all the things I've been working on. And I just want to say Happy New Year to you all. Today it is Saturday, January 6th, and it's been a couple weeks since I've last filmed. And the reason for that is because I actually flew home for the holidays. Uh, I didn't say that in some other, or my last video, because it was going to be a surprise for some people. And I didn't, didn't know if they watched the videos, but I didn't want to spoil the surprise. So... Now that's over. I did go home to Hawaii for the holidays. It was really awesome. I got to spend a lot of time with family and friends. And yeah, it was a good time. I was there for two weeks. I actually just got back last night and so I am still pretty tired. I woke up so late this morning. Uh, yeah, I thought I would wake up early and do my go back to my normal routine of knitting early in the morning, but no, I had to sleep in because I was very tired. So yeah, but we are back on the videos today, and I'm so happy to be doing this again. I've missed it a lot, and surprisingly, I didn't knit as much as I thought I would on this trip, but maybe that's good because I spent more time with, again, family and friends and eating a lot of good food. So I did spend Christmas there and also New Year's. And this may be kind of surprising, but New Year's is my favorite holiday and being able to spend it at home is really fun. If you don't know, in Hawaii, it gets pretty crazy for New Year's. Uh, there are a lot of aerial fireworks, like, you know, the really pretty ones, and they are illegal. I have to say that, but for some reason in Hawaii, there's just like a lot of people who somehow get their hands on it. But for me as a viewer, it makes it look very pretty on New Year's. If I remember, I would try and put a video up of some, yeah, some of the fireworks I saw on New Year's. It is quite loud, I won't lie. Some, some of them are too loud. I'm like, you guys, that's ridiculous, but the views are amazing in Hawaii. Uh, I, that's why I love New Year's. And also I get to eat a lot of good food. I do a lot of, like on New Year's Day, we have like kind of, do you call it traditional like Japanese breakfast for New Year's? And I love that. I love ozoni, which is like a soup that has like mochi in it. It's different depending on like where your family's from, like in Japan, but it's normally some like a soup with mochi and some vegetables and things that kind of symbolize other things. And oh, it's just such good food. and. Yeah, this whole trip, I just ate all of the good food as much as I could, and it was a good time. But anyway, we are not here to necessarily talk about that, but we're here to talk about some knitting, so I'll get started on that real fast. So, I do have a couple finished objects that I did finish while I was on my trip, and yeah. So, we'll start off with what I am wearing. You'll maybe see that I am wearing the same cardigan as I did last week. It's because it's cold, and I wanted to wear it again, but... What I'm wearing under it is a finished object. So I will take off the cardigan just to show you my finished object. This was my, this is my first, no, I think it was my second finished object on my trip. Actually, I forget. Anyway, it's one of my finished objects on my trip. This top may not look familiar or you've probably forgotten about it because I have not worked on it in a very long time, since like summer. It might have been June or July. This is the Juno top by Inez, a Vare Knit on Instagram. And the yarn I use for this is Explore Knits Denali Sock, the fingering weight base in the colorway Thistle, which I love this color, I love this color. I made a size one and I made the strappy version of this top. So I think kind of like the original version of this top is a strapless with some sleeves or you can just make it without the sleeves and I think that version is very very cute but when I was thinking more about it I don't think I would wear it as much as a strapless top and when she said that she was doing a strappy version I was like it is also very cute with the straps and I want to make it 
and it's taking me this long to make it but I thought since it is a tank top and I will be in Hawaii and it's a lot warmer there I might have more motivation to work on this because then it seems more wearable in Hawaii right now than it is here in Seattle because it's cold uh, so I finished it I feel very happy about it and oh my finished measurements for this and I will stand up to show you uh, how this fits on me but I have 30 inches of circumference around so that gives me zero inches of positive ease and yeah I really like it I will stand up now I'll, I will continue to talk about it but I'll try and again move back so this is how it fits on me I didn't make it I forget what the length says in the pattern, but I made it so that it's not like super long or super cropped, just somewhere in the middle. So like my belly button's like right here. Um, and I'm wearing like higher waisted leggings, so I think it works that way. That's kind of like how I like to wear my tops anyway. So there it is. And the part that I really like is actually like the scalloped edging on the neck and on around the arms as well. And so one thing I would do differently next time, so I, even though it's taking me a very long time to make this top, I would consider making another one again just because it's very wearable and I think it's very cute and would also look good in different colors and just have, yeah, different colors, different vibes uh, in your wardrobe with the same top. Uh, the, one thing, the one thing I would change though is I would probably make the straps longer for myself and that is partly my mistake. I tend to make my straps too long because I forget that or just like it's hard for me to predict how much it'll stretch once it's blocked and like with wear. So I've been trying to make my straps a little shorter but I think in this case they might have been too short and I'm too lazy to undo the bind off to, to make them a little longer. And because I think it fits okay, but the one thing is because it is a little short in my underarm area, the scalloped edging kind of folds over just because that's where my arm is like folding over it. So I would kind of make it maybe just like a tad longer next time, but I would still wear this as is. Like I'm not unhappy with how this came out. Uh, oh, one thing to note is that the scalloped edging is done with crochet. So it's very easy, it's very simple, uh, but ju yeah, just as a note, scalp edging is crochet. Just in case you don't own a crochet hook and you want to make this, probably, yeah, good idea if you want to make this version. But you also don't need to have the scalp edging, of course, you can just skip out on that and it's still very cute as a top. And let's see, what else? Oh, I use US3 needles to make this and the stitch is very cute. I will, I think it's called, she calls it a Dutch braid, I think. It's, maybe you can tell, like, there's columns of twisted stitch. It's kind of like a rib, and then this middle part is like the, a Dutch braid or something. And the, she has a video on how to make it, and so that makes it very easy, because I think explaining it with words is kind of hard to figure out what actually is happening, but she has a video, so it's very easy to figure out what, what is going on. And so, yeah, that's really great. Oh, it is worked bottom up, and there is bust shaping. And I was kind of worried, I would, when, once I was getting near that point, I was really worried just because I don't know, I had no idea how it was going to look shaping-wise, but maybe, I don't know if it's kind of weird. Or can you see it? There's this line right here on both sides for the bust shaping and she has instructions on how to figure out what size uh, you want to make and so yeah definitely so I followed the instructions I made sure I like read through it and followed the recommendations and the measurements you do have to measure yourself for like your own personal fit so I did find that to be very useful so yeah, overall, I really like this top. I want to make another one in a different color and I'm so happy that it's done. It's taken way longer than it needed to because it is, it's a tank top and so it should knit up faster than a sweater.
possibly. And oh, I, as far as yarn, I had two skeins ready for this. I, I knew that I wasn't going to use that much of my second skein, but I really, I think I might have, if I didn't do the scallop edging, I would have, it would have been done with one skein, pretty much, or like very, very close. So for my size, which was size one, I, you might, yeah, could, I could have done it with one skein if I made it like really cropped, but I like having just that, the extra edging and all of that. So, and since I have a second skein, we were all good, but now I need to figure out what to do with the leftovers. My almost one more skein of this color. But yeah, so now that we are done talking about that top, I am going to put my cardigan back on because I am cold. But that is one of my finished objects from my trip. And then I do have one more finished object and it's another one that I was like, I want to get this done. Oh, and I finished this top and this next one before the end of 2023. So these are all finished objects for 2023. And this is still blocking, or well, it's still wet. I like literally just, <laughs> I started blocking it today and I was like, oh no, I wanna make my video and I wanted to show you this top. But it's kind of damp, but it's okay to hold it up for a little bit, I think. This is the Slightly Sassy V by Amy Schur. Yes, this is another whip that kind of took some time for me to get, get it started, get it finished, but I finished it on the trip. And it is so cute. I made, sorry, I don't want to hold it up too long just because it is a little damp. I don't want it to stretch, but, and I will plan on wearing this in a future soon video, either the next video or something like that. So Slightly Sassy V by Amy Schur. I use Moon Drake Co. Fua Fua yarn in the colorway Rose Quartz. It's so soft. I made size A and I use US 3 needles to make this. And I don't have finished measurements for it yet, but when I do wear it, I will talk about finished measurements. And yeah, I, so, I did not block this when I was in Hawaii, but I did wear it while I was in Hawaii, and surprisingly, it was, like, it was breezy in Hawaii, but it was definitely hot, and I felt fine wearing this. There were some moments where I was like, ooh, it's kind of hot, but, like, it was actually quite enjoyable, I think, because the yarn is just so light and fluffy, and it's very airy, like, it's, it's definitely kind of sheer, and... But with that, like the wind kind of like can come in, it feels nice and breezy, which is really good. I'm curious to see how this feels when it's cold. Like if it still like keeps you warm, it probably won't keep you really, really warm. Or if it's windy and it's cold, it'll probably be too cold. But yeah, I'm just very curious now that I have it up here uh, to wear it and see how it feels up here. But yeah, I, I finished it. I'm very happy with it. The yarn is amazing. It is so soft and I almost hate how much I love the yarn because I kind of want to make another one with the yarn, the same yarn in a different color, but we'll see. Uh, I, as far as like length, I did make the body just to like my own preference. So it is longer than the cropped measurements, but I think shorter than the full length. And then I did the three quarter sleeves as you can see here. And yeah, I I actually love this. I'm, I'm not surprised that I love it, but it took me, I think it's one of those knits where I know I will love the end product, but for some reason I just like kept putting it off. But I'm very happy that it is done and I can wear it. It's so soft. Uh, yeah, I wanna make another one in the Fua Fua base, but I really don't need to buy more yarn right now. Uh, but I'd also make it, like, the pattern is, the Fua Fua was not, like, a pattern recommendation. It was just kind of, oh, actually what happened was I bought the yarn, didn't know what I was going to make with it. And then Shreya reached out and was like, oh, I saw that you have some Fua Fua. Do you have plans? If not, let's make the uh, Slightly Sassy V together. And so me, uh, Shreya, and Sharon are making it together. And so... Uh, yeah, so 
that's fun. It's another fun friend knit and I am done with mine. So what else? I love it. I can't wait to wear it and show it to you in hopefully my next video. And I think that's all I have to say about my slightly sassy V. Oh, I know what else I was going to say. I, if I don't make another one in Fua Fua, I would definitely make another one in just like a fingering weight yarn as well. So, oh, the fit. That was the one thing as soon as I put it on, this was before blocking, but I'm sure it's going to be very similar or maybe even better. I love the fit of this top a lot. So I will probably make another one in the future. It's a very good staple piece, I think. Okay, now on to my whips, my work in progress projects. <laughs> uh, okay, first off, I want to talk about, this is another one I decided for this trip. I really wanted to bring projects that have just been kind of lingering and that I wanted to make a lot of progress on. So this one, I made a ton of progress on. I picked up my Calm Down cardigan, finally, and so it looks a little strange now. It looks like just like a blob, but last time I touched this, I only had this front from top, the top here to the armhole, this front section. That's all I had done, and so now I have the back, the other front, and I have connected I've connected under the arms and started the body. So we've got a good amount of progress there, I think. And let's see, the yarn I'm using is Woolberry Fiber Co. Berry DK in the colorway Rabbit Rump, which is, as you can see here, a variegated kind of speckled colorway, kind of a white base with some gray, black, or just like really dark specs there. That's what it looks like in the skein. And I'm making size one. I'm using US 4 and US 5 needles. US 5 is for the main body. And yeah, it is going well, I think. The I am not alternating skeins just because I'm, I'm lazy. Sometimes I feel like doing it, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but I will show you. So this is how my back looks right now. The top part, you can tell, is definitely a different skein than the bottom part. Uh, but I am like, I'm okay with that because it's the back and my hair is probably going to be like covering this part. But even if it doesn't, like, it's okay. I'm okay with that. But yeah, so that's how the back is looking right now. Uh, the armholes are kind of oh, like, they're huge. So... That will be interesting but this cardigan is just like pretty massive like it uses a lot of skeins of yarn so this will just be I think a really nice oversized feeling kind of cardigan but yeah I'm excited to be working on this and just getting a lot of progress on it because I do do want the finished object I really like wearing cardigans this time of the year well I mean anytime I like wearing cardigans but definitely this time of year I love wearing cardigans so yeah that is my progress update on this. Oh, the Calm Down Cardigan is a pattern by Lily Kate France, uh, who is Lily Kate Makes on Instagram. And this is another friend knit, knit along with uh, the Seattle friend group and our Bay Area friend group as well. So I am definitely, I think, well, until, I think I'm still behind, but I was definitely at some point the most behind on this. We don't have a deadline for this, except for I think we think it'd be cute to all wear it at Flock next year, but I was I was behind. I think I'm still behind. I think some people are done with theirs. So yeah, I'm just trying to catch up, but now that I have some more finished objects kind of like done, and now it's the new year, I'm feeling nice and refreshed on working on some projects. So yeah, we've got the Calm Down cardigan back on my needles. And next up, I have I have only one more work in progress to talk about. I only brought four projects to me, uh, to me, uh, with me to Hawaii. 
And this one was my New Year's cast on. I wanted to have something small for a New Year's cast on, New Year's Day cast on. So this is, I am halfway done with this project. I cast on some DRK Everyday Socks by Andrew Mowry. And I finished one sock. So yeah, uh, what do I think? What do I, I feel out of practice. I think it's been like two weeks. Um, DRK Everyday Socks by Andrew Murray. I haven't made this pattern before, but I've been wanting to make it so bad. <laughs> and so I'm really glad to have finished one sock with it already. The yarn I'm using, it feels so special. It is my hand spun. This might have been my like third ever skein of hand spun. Uh maybe? Or like a hand dyed, one of the hand dyed. I got this fiber when I was in at, at Flock, from Flock last year in 2023. And I did finish it. I think I spun, I spun my singles of this yarn on my electric eel wheel nano. And then I applied it as soon as I got my electric eel wheel 6.0. And so it, it has been kind of a while, like in my stash, like I've knit with newer hand spun than this, but I was waiting. I wanted this hand spun specifically to be for socks. And I just, for some reason, was not feeling like knitting socks last year. Well, yeah, last year. And so I was like, okay, New Year's cast on. I want something small. I'll finally cast on these socks. And yeah, oh, the hand spun is Paul Worth fiber from 316 Dye Studio and the colorway is Desert Rose. And I did do a fractal spin on this, and I think it's so interesting to see how the colors change uh, throughout the sock. If I hide my eyes, maybe it'll focus on the sock and you can see the colors, maybe. But anyway, yeah, this is a two by two ribbed sock. So it looks very skinny and tall, but maybe if I, here, I'll stick my hand in it. <laughs> Does that help so that you can see it a little better? This is the sock sideways. Mm. I haven't blocked it yet, as you could maybe tell. I don't know. But yeah, this is the sock. Oh, this is the first time I am doing a, I think the heel is called a flegal heel. It is a toe up sock. When And actually, I think I'm starting to like toe up socks. So, but yeah, I've never done this type of heel before. And I actually found it really enjoyable. I also think it fits really well. I do want to wait to kind of have a, you know, definite opinion on this heel uh, until after I finish my second one. I block it. I wear it for a little bit and see uh, how it feels. But I think I, I like it. The construction was really easy. And yeah, so this is what it looks like. It might be kind of hard because the hand spun is kind of very multicolored, but this is that heel. And the instructions were very simple. It, the way you work the heel feels like when you work the, if you do the heel flap and gusset heel, um, the section where you do the heel turn and you knit kind of like back and forth and you do like the purl two together, knit one, and then know, knit purl to the next one, knit two together, knit one. And then you turn and there's like those whole, like that heel, is that called the heel flap or the heel, the turn, heel turn? It's very, it's all of that is just this section. And so it's very easy, I think, instruction wise to figure out. And then when I figured, when I put it on my foot and figured out where that lay on my foot or the heel, that was uh, very um, interesting. And I think I like it. So very happy with this first sock I did start. My second one, which I worked a little bit of, and oddly, I didn't plan it, but it is starting on like a similar color toe, but it is, yeah, no, yeah, it's starting off very similar, which is interesting how that worked out. But yeah, this is my skein, or my cake of my hand spun with this yarn, and it just makes me very happy. So this is my first pair of hand spun socks. And I'm hoping to get them done pretty soon because I want to wear them. But yeah, so that was my one new cast on. Um, 
yeah, that I started on January 1st of 2024, my first cast on of 2024. So that is actually all I have to talk about with the things that I have been knitting in the past couple weeks. It's really been not as much as my normal knitting, but again, it was the holidays and so a lot of things were happening, but I feel very good about the things I've knit on to finish objects and yeah, picked up another kind of knit I have been neglecting for a while and a small new cast on. So that all feels really great. And I do have, so, and I did not bring any spinning things with me to Hawaii, so there was no spinning done. But I do have some acquisitions, uh, I do have some acquisitions, and a lot of them are gifts that I got for Christmas and, uh, and my birthday. So I would love to share that with you all now. So I first want to talk about, oh. Yeah, some of these were presents and some of these were also just like things that came in the mail from things I bought before. I want to talk about this first. Uh, I don't know what order to do this in. Okay, anyway. Oh no, okay, let's, let's do this first. I got in my order from Woolberry. I thought that maybe I talked about this in last week's or last video and maybe I did. I don't think I did. But if I did, sorry, I'm, I will be repeating myself. I got the colorway Sugar Cookie, which I think was a collective colorway sometime uh, last year. It just feels weird to say last year. Um, and yeah, I got it on Berry Merino and also Berry Suri. So I'll just show you both of them here. This colorway is so cute. It is a pale pink base with some red, red, dark pink speckles, some other like tan-ish brown color in there as well. I think it's very cute. And so I got some of that. That came in the mail and that made me happy. I love the color. And then I also got, um, my Nest Fiber Club for December. It is a Rambouillet fiber, which I'm very excited to work with. Again, I think I've spun one thing with Rambouillet and I really liked it. And the colorway is Cosley. Cosley. Here it is. It is out of the, the time that I have been in the Nest Fiber Club, I think this is the most, my favorite color my favorite color. I kind of want to buy another another thing, another four ounces. I think it's four ounces. Another thing of this. But I gotta think on it. But it is, oh it's my favorite color so far. I really 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 like this because of the pale pinks, purples, orangey bits. Yeah, dark purple, pink. Oh it's so pretty. I love it. So I'm very happy with that, excited to work with it. And then, okay, on to, on to the presents. So since we're on the fiber train, fiber train, uh, since we're just talking about fiber, I'll talk about the other fiber thing that I got. I asked my boyfriend to get this for me as a present and I'm very excited about it. And thank you to him for getting this for me. As a present, okay, and I, I, I had to tell him exactly what I wanted. Uh, but this is the first time that I've bought fiber from this company, and I'm very excited about it. So, I bought some fiber from John Arbin Textiles, and I didn't know they did fiber. I don't know why I ended up looking it up, but there we go. And I got the Yarnadelic top, which is a 100% Falklands Corydale base or fiber. And I got it in the colorway, the beautiful ones. And I was definitely uh, influenced for this colorway from Shreya because she made a sweater. I think actually her and um, other our other Bay Area friends uh, made, like they were doing their uh, like matching knits with yarn 
and they use the Beautiful Ones uh, colorway yarn from John Arbin Textiles. And when I, I love the color. And when I saw, this was like kind of a while ago, uh, but yeah, when I saw that there was fiber and I saw the colorway, the Beautiful Ones, I was like, oh, I think that's the same colorway. And I was like, wow, I am so shocked and uh, at what this fiber looks like uh, because the color, the yarn, so they do sell this in yarn form as well. It has so much depth in the color. And now I understand why, because I will hold up the fiber. It's like, it's like a little baby. <laughs> I did get 700 grams of this fiber, uh, which is a lot, but it's because I want to, I want this to be my next sweater spin. Uh, and I am just, <laughs> I'm so excited uh, to start spinning with this. And I was so excited when I saw it packaged like this, I was like, I can't wait to show you guys what this looks like. Cause yeah, it's just kind of like rolled up into this whole thing. But look how crazy this, the colors look in this. There is yellow, like strips of yellow, like a dark pink and blue. Um, very pastel looking. And I think when, when it's all spun up because the way, so I would, I would spin it this way, uh, like pulling, just pulling this way. And so all the colors will mix together. I won't be doing it. I think if you wanted more distinct colors, you, you could spin it like sideways or from, from the side. Uh, sorry, now there's like fiber flying everywhere. But I want it to be very mixed and blended so that the yarn has like that same like depth of color in the actual yarn of the beautiful ones. And so, yeah, I'm just, oh, I'm so excited to see how this spins up. But yeah, here's what, here's what that fiber looks like. And I can't wait to start. So yeah, this is gonna be my next sweater spin uh, of 2024. And I can't wait. So yeah, so that was one of my presents. I will maybe just for, I was reading this card for the details of the fiber that I got. In case you are wondering, I should have it in my notes or in the description down below as well. But if it's, yeah, definitely easier for you to read it on the screen, there it is. Hopefully you can read that. And next up for presents, I, uh, yeah, let's keep with the, yarn like fiber it's not fiber it's yarn but okay I have some yarn that I got from a friend she had some extras and she knew I loved it so she gifted it to me which is so kind I oh I don't know I got a I want to mention that I've got a couple like countdown kind of yarn last at the end of last year and I don't think I talked about them too much on here because I didn't want to spoil it for anyone. I made that mistake with the Explore Knits Winter Solstice countdown because I was a week early and so I kind of got um, freaked out by it and I just I don't want to spoil it for anyone but I don't know if it's worth showing it all. Maybe in the next video, next like regular episode video I can show it because at this point I think Hopefully everyone opened it all, but I did, I do want to mention, I did get the Explore Knits Winter Solstice Countdown, and I also got the Paisley Knits Barbie Countdown, uh, which I don't think I mentioned at all, but it is so happy and pink, and oh, I finally watched the Barbie movie, and so that was really fun because now I finally got the references to all the colorway names, and so that was really cute, and I also got... The Coast to Coast uh, New Year's Day yarn, like the day yarn colorway, which was called Sprinkle. And I really liked it. And so my friend who also got it actually got, she had some two skeins extra on the classic DK base, uh, which is a 100% superwash merino four ply. And I'm very happy because I love this color. The one that the skein that I got was a the fingering weight base, and so now I have two DK 
two DK skeins of Sprinkle. And it's so cute. I really like it. And also with that, uh, okay, hopefully this crinkling isn't too much, but I actually was very tempted to buy the New Year's Countdown, which had, I forget how many mini skeins, maybe 10 mini skeins uh, from Coast to Coast, but I resisted. I told myself just the day, day of New Year's Day skein was fine, but the same friend also um, bought, I think she was selling extras of the countdown, and so there were five mini skeins, uh, random mini skeins from the countdown, and she also gave them to me. I think they weren't really quite her colors, and so thank you so much uh, for giving them to me. I kept them in the wrapping. Oops, sorry. I kept them in the wrapping. I did already open them, but I will just open them now if that's all right with you all. So this will be done in no order except for what's on my lap and easiest to get to. So this is 13 or day 13. Okay, so that means there was more than 10. Actually, how many were there? This says 13. Anyway, I have five of them and they were just random days. But this was day 13. Okay, shit, I could probably just put that down here. Okay. How cute is that? This is What Flames Could Not Consume, Day 13. These are all the classic sock mini, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. So that is really pretty. I do really like browns in general, so I think that that is gorgeous. I will hold them all up together after as well. Okay, this is day eight. Sorry for the crinkle. Okay, this is, ooh, is it like season eight, episode four? I don't know what that's referencing, but that is a fun color as well. Okay, now this is day 18. Oh, and I, um, the reason why it's so brown, I believe, I think that the New Year's countdown was like a coffee themed, or yeah, like coffee house themed or something. So this one is coffee, day 18, really nice dark brown. Okay, next one is 16, 16. Okay. Uh... A damn fine cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's a really gorgeous brown too. More of a red-ish brown than the one previous. And then this is day 10. Oops. Oh. Cortado, if that's how you say it. Yeah, so I got all of these. Let me hold them up. Very pretty browns. I think that she is actually doing a pre-order for some of these in full skeins uh, today, maybe, um, which I will try to resist. Really gotta try and resist it there. But yeah, these are pretty. I feel slightly better if I resist this collection because I have some minis of some gorgeous browns. And so hopefully that will help me. Uh, so yeah, so that was that. And then I have a couple more things. So uh, my sister got me this, uh, a Woobles kit. I think this is a BTS themed one. Um, yeah, it's just very cute. I do really like this character out of like all the BTS characters. I think because, is this a sheep? Is this a sheep? Uh, yeah, so very interesting. I've this I've never had or used a Woobles kit before, and I think they're pretty pricey. But yeah, I'm excited to see how this works up. I think that it has everything you need included in it, and I also heard, and it also says here that they pre-start the piece for you. I think it's because so this is a crochet uh, kit, and I think it's because usually for this type of like Ami Gudumi type stuff, you start with like a magic, it's called a magic loop, 
which if you d haven't crocheted before, might be kind of difficult to uh, start. And so I heard that it has, it starts it for you. But yeah, I will try this soon. I don't know if maybe within the next week, but I will definitely, when I try it, I will let you all know what I think about it, but I think it's so cute. So that's pretty exciting. And I want to also talk about this amazing um, present that I got from my friend. Uh, I want to give a shout out to her. Her name is Rumor. She is a um, good friend of mine. We were actually friends from elementary school and then we went to college together and uh, now it's so funny because we've like separately started crafting and but she is definitely she sews she is a great sewist and has a great curated instagram account with all the things she sews it's amazing she makes amazing things and she was so kind and gifted me and my other knitting friend um laura project bags and i just i just need to show it to you all because it is so cute Look at that. It's pink. It has bunnies on it. And I have been wanting a project bag that is this shape. So it's like a circular, circular base. So it's round. She made pockets on the outside and also on the inside. There's it's lined and it has pockets. And it has a drawstring top, which is just amazing. And also handles and it is just so cute she has her logo here um handmade with aloha by rumor she's also from hawaii and this is her uh tag here as well and it's perfect i uh i used it on the plane coming back home i put my calm down cardigan in here and so it fit uh the amount that i have right now plus an extra skein in here and it could fit more uh, but I did bring this with me on the plane, and this is my project, ba project bag for the plane, and it was perfect. Thank you so much, Rumor. Uh, I love it so much. And yeah, um, that is all I have to talk about today. It got dark really fast outside. I don't know if you could tell. I feel like I am in darkness right now. The only thing that's lighting me up right now is actually my computer screen, so we're going to try and keep that on. But... I think that's all I have to talk about today. It is a little bit of a shorter video, but that's just because, yeah, I have less things to talk about, but that's because a lot of holiday stuff has happened within the last time I filmed and today. But I hope that you all have had a great holiday season. Hopefully you got to do what makes you happy. And I, oh, I am planning on filming my everything I've made in 2023 video sometime soon. So hopefully I will get that out um, soon in January. Yeah, hopefully soon. And yeah, when it comes out, I guess you'll see it. Uh, if you are subscribed to this channel, I think you will get a notification. And yeah, I think that's it. I always have a hard time saying bye because I love talking to you all. But I hope you all have a great rest of your day on whichever day you're watching this. Have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye!